First, though, we gotta get our final health extension. I'm Honeybee. I'll trade you extra energy units in return for empty honeycombs. You have enough honeycombs for one extra energy unit. Do you want to trade? Yes. Sure, honey. Toss your honeycombs over here then, Big Bear. Here's your extra energy. There we go. Look at that health bar. We are now officially ready to take on the final boss. But first, actually, we need to go back to Mayhem Temple's code chamber in order to uh, activate some cheats. All right, let's enter that final code. Jukebox. Even though it's pronounced jukebox, the K is silent. The jukebox cheat will activate the jukebox at Jolly's. Yep, it'll actually fix his jukebox if we activate it. There's also one final cheat that we have not unlocked. So again, you have to type in Chio at first. Stupid Moggy, get out of the way. All right. I believe it's Jiggy Wiggy Special. It's either Jiggy Wiggy Special or Jiggy Wiggy's Special. I think it's Jiggy Wiggy Special. So G J I G G Y W I G G Y. Then S P E C I. Hey, the Jiggy Wiggy special cheat will open up all Jiggy Wiggy's doors on the ILO hags. Yeah, if you that cheat can literally just open every world for you, but that's cheating, literally. All right, we are still not going to equip the auto the honey bag cheat, but we will equip Jolly's jukebox. And there we go. That's all twelve main cheats in the entire game. We are not equipping these though. Infinite eggs and feathers is... And it's not super broken, but it's a little broken. Infinite energy is ridiculously broken. Homing eggs kind of break the game a bit. If it's if you're playing casually, equip the Super Banjo cheat. Fast Banjo is super nice. And if you want extra challenge, you can also equip Super Batty. Or just equip Super Batty. I think I mentioned it before, but I actually debated when I Let's Play this doing a Super Batty challenge run. But maybe I'll stream that later. Another fun challenge is it's apparently possible to beat this game while only jumping five times. Like, I'm not kidding. You literally can beat this game only jumping five times. It's crazy and also awesome, and it could be fun to try that. <laughs> For those of you who are curious, the five jumps you need in order to beat the game are one, to jump up to the Isle Hags Plateau from the Wooded Hollow, two, to jump up to the Quagmire from all of the Scritty Step Shoes, three, to reach the Talon Torpedo move, and then four and five are needed for the final boss. So. All right. Now that we've activated Jolly's jukebox, let's see what it actually does. Yep. Yeah. Let me in. All right, it's been a while since we've put, uh, paid Jolly a visit. I don't know how the Cheeto cheat magically fixes his physical jukebox, but I won't complain. Thanks again, and remember, it's Grab a Sailor Night in here every Wednesday. I think we'll give it a miss. It's very popular. One doubloon gets you five tankards of Seaman's Brew. Hey, Jolly, you seem happy. Thanks again. Anyhow, his jukebox is now nice and lit up. Pick a world to play A, select B, cancel. So now we, we this basically unlocks the soundtrack for the game. So we can basically play any song from the game in here, which is pretty cool. And Jolly will dance to it. Jolly, this is not a happy dance. <laughs> yeah, this is always cool, though. Yep, so there's Spiral Mountain, Mayhem Temple, Quitter Ultra Mind, Witchy World, Jolly Rogers Lagoon, Pterodactyl Land, Grunty Industries, Hellfire Peaks, Cloud Cuckoo Land, Cauldron Keep is the final world. There's also Isle of Hags, and then Miscellaneous. 
Why? You are literally hovering right now, buddy. Cuckoo Land Hags is still my favorite, though. One of the few permanently missable content in the game, at least when on a file-by-file -file basis, is the sad Jinjo House music. Because if you've saved all of the Jinjos before you ever entered their house, you won't ever hear that. Same with In the Hall of the Zombie Cane. Party of Bottles is another one we haven't heard yet. That's for the end game. What are the miscellaneous songs? What the heck? Jolly. <laughs> I don't remember his dance as being this weird. Also, are the waiting step boots literally only used for two parts of the entire game? I'm pretty sure the waiting step boots are only used for the quicksand pit in the Jade Snake Grove and then the quicksand in Pterodactyl Land. I think that's literally it. Like, it wasn't even used in Hailfire Peaks to wade across icy water or la the lava. Kind of ridiculous. Yeah, you can feel free to play around with the jukebox if you get it yourself. So, I should also have mentioned... So, I never got the jukebox cheat legitimately, because um, I could never beat that Canary Mary second race, because I didn't realize you literally had to try to fail it, and then only succeed at the end. So there is a way to activate that cheat early, and the way that you do it is you first type in this typical Cheeto, so, like, to activate the special cheat, and then what you do is, after entering Cheeto, you type in the cheat code, but if it's one of the cheat codes that Cheeto gives you, you have to type it in backwards. So you'd have to spell jukebox backwards after the Cheeto, so that would be X-O-B-E-K-U-J. Kind of strange that. Also, a couple other things I just want to show off before we finish. The first one here is if we go back to the Jinjo Village, if you actually enter King Jinoline's zombified throne room, we mentioned, we heard him saying some weird stuff, but now that we've explored the game and basically found everything in it, his strange cryptic warnings will actually make a bit more sense. <laughs> Poor little pet. Oh, we can't even jump on his throne? That's kind of weird. Yeah, he'll start saying some weird stuff. Old King Cole? Oh yeah, he's the right one. <laughs> That's referencing the boss of Glitter Gulch Mine. Oh yes, Lord Wu and I go way back. We often go fishing together, but I'm not supposed to tell anyone. <laughs> and then he just referenced the boss of Jolly Rogers Lagoon. Yeah, Genoine here will give you cryptic warnings about the bosses of the games, which is kind of amusing. I hear Terry's wife left him recently, so his little uns are all he has left. He's very protective of them. That's how you learn Terry's actually a guy, and that makes Terry's story a lot sadder, and a lot more- it makes him a much more understandable character. You can actually beat him up. Don't mess with Target Zan. He's got a terrible temper. I never knew you could attack him. Doesn't look like it does anything, though. Be quick on the planes. Stompadon shows no mercy. That's referencing the stomping planes. The giant of dinosaurs. Stompadon would be the most terrifying character in the game. I heard that Ninjos look just like us Jinjos. How bizarre. I think he can give you warnings about the dragons on Hailfire Peaks, Minji Janjo, maybe Weldar, and also maybe Mr. Patch. But I couldn't get him to say those, so unfortunately. That's that. Alright, next up. 
I'm just gonna read all the signs in Jiggy Wiggy's temple so you guys can get a glimpse of, um, that you guys can remember where the Jiggies were, because we have all 90 Jiggies in the game, which is everything that we need. Behold the Jiggy secrets of Mayahem Temple. 1. Defeat Target Zan. 2. Inside Target Zan's Temple. 3. Top of Target Zan's Temple. 4. Recover Target Zan's Stolen Gold. 5. Win the Kickball Game. 6. Kill the Plague of Flies. 7. Quicksand Area in Jade Snake Grove. 8. Sleeping Jade Snake. 9. Quicksand Area in Prison Compound. 10. Stone Columns in Prison Compound. Behold the Jiggy Secrets of Glitter Gulch Mine. 1. Defeat Old King Cole. 2. Canary Mary's Hand Cart Race. 3. Inside the Generator ca Cavern. 4. Inside the Waterfall Cavern. 5. Inside the Ordnance Storage. 6. Rescue the Rat from Mayahem Temple's Prison Compound. 7. Crush the Jiggy Boulder and collect the pieces. 8. Behind the Exterior Waterfall. 9. In the Power Hut Basement. 10. In the Flooded Caves. Behold the Jiggy Secrets of Witchy World. 1. Defeat Mr. Patch. 2. Win the Balloon Burst Game. 3. Win the Hoop Hurry Game. 4. Win the Dodgem Dome Games. 5. Saucer Peril Ride. 6. Top of the Dive of Death Board. 7. Return Kids to Mrs. Boggy. 8. Top of the Star Spinner. 9. Top of the Inferno's Tower. 10. Cactus of Strength. Behold the Jiggy Secrets of Jolly Roger's Lagoon. 1. Defeat Lord Wu Fak Fak. 2. Sea Bottom Cavern Mines Game. 3. Hatch and Help Baby Tip Top. 4. Inside the Temple of the Fishes. 5. Clean Up and Heat the Pool. 6. Inside Smuggler's Cavern Below Jollies. 7. Rescue Mary Maggie from Inside the Big Fish. 8. Inside a Transparent Fish. 9. Inside Pono's Emporium. 10. Power Up the UFO. Behold the Jiggy Secrets of Pterodactyland. 1. Defeat Terry. 2. Hatch and return Terry's eggs. 3. Underneath the center of Terry's nest. 4. Fill the thirsty dinosaur's pool. 5. Help the Styracosaurus family. 6. Warm up and get food for the Oogle Boogles. 7. Inside the Chomposaurus belly. 8. On the Stomping Plains. 9. Defeat the Rocknuts tribe. 10. Small T-Rex Roar Code. Behold the Jiggy Secrets of Grunty Industries. 1. Defeat Weldar. 2. Inside the Waste Disposal Plant. 3. Inside the Waste Disposal Plant. 4. Wash the Filthy Workers. 5. Top of the Central Platform on Floor 1. 6. Inside the Trash Compactor on Floor 1. 7. Packing Game on Floor 3. 8. Exterminate the Clinkers on Floor 4. 9. Quality Control Room on Floor 4. 10. Top of the Crates on Floor 5. Behold the Jiggy Secrets of Hellfire Peaks. 1. Defeat Chili Willy and Chili Billy. 2. Inside the Volcano. 3. Help Saberman back to his tent. 4. Feed Bobby the Polar Bear. 5. Ice Train Station Link. 6. Activate the Oil Drill. 7. Pterodactyland Stomping Plains Link. 8. Win the Coliseum Kickball Games. 9. Help the UFO Aliens. 10. Inside the Coliseum Arches. Behold the Jiggy Secrets of Cloud Cuckoo Land. 1. Defeat Minji Jonjo. 2. Win the Cuckoo Olympics. 3. Complete the Pot of Gold Game. 4. Canary Mary's Clockwork Mouse Race. 5. Zubba's Hive Game. 6. Defeat the Eyeball Plants. 7. Inside the Cheese Wedge. 8. Trash Can Germs Game. 9. Find the Safes Combination. 10. Inside the Jelly Castle. All of the Jiggies in the game, excluding the one you get from Jingling at the beginning and collecting all of the Jinjos, but they kind of assume that you already know those. Anyhow, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, at this point, the only thing we have to do is take on the final world. It's technically a final world, but there are no Jiggies or collectibles or anything in it. No new moves, it's basically just a straight shot to the final boss. Now you might be wondering where the heck that that is. Well, if we go over to the Quagmire... We can use these convenient uh, claw clamber boots. So you need to go to Grunty Industries before you can do this. At the end of this pipe here, there are footprints that we can walk up. Here.
Here we go. Cauldron Keep secret exit. And unfortunately, there's a laser gate in the way that we cannot get past, so we'll need Jiggy Wiggy's help for that. But we can push this switch here and make a convenient little springy uh, shock jump disc at the bottom, and that'll give us a nice little shortcut. All right. That's it, everybody. That's it for the collectibles, for the objects and items. We still have burgers and fries from Witchy World, and we also still have two doubloons that we got from uh, Captain Black Eye. You can technically save a couple of other doubloons as well just by uh, <laughs> blowing open Jolly's door, but that was in an alternate save file. We've collected every single Jinjo family, and if we go over to the totals, Game totals, we have 90 Jiggies, 900 Notes, 25 Hollow Honeycomb Pieces, 45 Jinjos, 25 Cheeto Pages, 24 Moves, 17 Globos, one of those being the Mega Globo, so that's why it's an odd number. There was one Cheeto Page and one Jinjo on Spiral Mountain. We got everything on the Isle of Hags. We got everything in the Mayahem Temple. Everything in Glitter Gulch Mine. Everything in Witchy World, everything in Jolly Roger's Lagoon, everything in Pterodactyl Land, everything in Grunty Industries, everything in Hailfire Peaks, and everything in Cloud Cuckoo Land. Next time, we are going to Cauldron Keep to take on the end of the game. It's going to be amazing. Look forward to that next time. We'll be starting by opening it up, and then we'll be exploring what little of Cauldron Keep there is to explore. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. But wait, there's more. Just a couple of bonus things I wanted to show off of alternate ways you can get some of these collectibles. So first, in Jolly Roger's Lagoon, there's this jiggy here in the Smuggler's Cavern. You're supposed to need to get, have Glide in order to reach this. However, we can cheese this and get it early by using Clockwork Eggs. If we are in the water and spit a Clockwork Egg at the right angle... You have to get the angle just right, but if you get it right, you can actually spit a Clockwork Egg up there and have it collected for you. Unfortunately, if you overshoot it, you'll have to see a little animation, so... Just aim just barely... Yep. Aim just barely above the, uh, platform. And there you go. You can grab it early, and instead of having to wait until you've explored Hellfire Peaks, you can actually grab this before you even enter Pterodactyl Land, which is just fantastic. As you also may have guessed, you can cheese the Cheeto page in here as well, again by using Clockwork Eggs. This one is a little bit easier to manage. You have this convenient little platform over here. And if you can aim the clockwork eggs properly, which I apparently cannot, you can just put a clockwork egg up there and grab the Cheeto page. It can be a little bit on the precise side, but one way of making it a bit easier is to try and hit the wall up here. Like so. And once again, clockworks prove their clock worth and are able to pick up stuff for you. So clockwork eggs just kind of break the game open for you. All right, but those two were just warm-up sequence breaks. Are you guys ready for the mother of all sequence breaks right here? So this is something that I figured out on my own just playing this game casually, and I have not seen anybody else on the internet be able to find... Uh, have, has, uh, I haven't found evidence that anyone else on the internet knows about this, so... For this Jiggy to wait across the Toxic Goo, what you're supposed to do is use Banjo's Sack Pack ability. Now, as a kid, I didn't know you could do this. For one, I didn't get the Sack Pack ability until very late in the game. I couldn't figure out how to grab it. I also did not know that you could wait across the surface of liquids with it, because this is the only Jiggy you're supposed to need to do that for, and Jam Jars never actually tells you about that. So, I was trying to figure out how in the world you can get across here, and as it turns out, there is actually a spectacular cheese sequence break that you can do here. And so what you need to do... <laughs> okay, this is absolutely crazy, and I swear, this is what I... This is how I thought you needed to do it as a kid. So what you want to do is you want to jump and then hover just above this, and then every time you enter this toxic goo, there's a tiny little bit of time that you have between hitting the toxic goo and when it actually throws you out. Provided you hover just right, you can continually jump hover across the toxic goo without actually getting kicked out. You can do this to travel across the toxic goo entirely and reach this side. Now this is where things are weird. This is a banjo only switch, but they don't actually assume that Banjo and Kazooie together can actually make it across here. So because they assume that, they apparently never actually programmed in the collision detection to make sure that you can't press it as Banjo and Kazooie. So. Even though we're Banjo and Kazooie, we can press a solo Banjo switch and grab this Jiggy early. I thought that this 
was the way you had to do it. But no, I haven't seen evidence that anybody on the internet knows that about this se sequence break other than me. This is something that I figured out all on my own. I, the other sequence breaks I actually got from speedrunners or people who were doing crazy runs of the game. I didn't realize clockwork eggs were that power powerful. But this right here is ridiculous. They literally did not program this switch. This one switch was not programmed like the others. I thought it was just Banjo switches in general had universal programming that Banjo alone could push them. No, apparently they have to program that individually for each switch. And this was one where they're like, Psh, you can't get across this Banjo and Kazooie. This switch cannot be pushed by Solo Kazooie because Solo Kazooie can't just glide across this really easily. But nope, apparently they didn't realize that Banjo and Kazooie together can actually wait across this just by rapidly, constantly jump and hover because you can actually do this faster than the game will actually check to see if you're over the toxic goo. It's crazy, but wow, Banjo and Kazooie are powerful. So yeah, that was the one I wanted to show off. So that's truly it. Thanks for watching, folks.